uh, my name is Dr. Paul Krzyzewski, founder of Wrench, lossless compression on the E. And we're going to talk about using AI to build enchanted worlds. All right. So uh, I'm preaching to the audience here, literally, uh, in the sense of we all believe that you know extended reality is, is a future platform. And it's really exciting, right? But here's the big challenge. All these systems are digital. And we are, are, are meat. We're physical. How do we digitize people? That's, that's, that's the big question, right? And so what's the state of the art? How many people are familiar with motion capture? All right. So for those of you who know motion capture, most of you do, motion capture has been a revolutionized system to give high fidelity humans into special effects, video games. And that's what breathes all the life in, into video games. And it, but as, as you can see there, right, the problem with these things is you've got to wear the crazy suits. You have to set up the big facility. You know, we're talking hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. It takes time to put on these things. That's not what we're here about. We're all here about, you know, making all these incredible AR experiences available to all of us right now. All right. So what do we want? So, it, it, you know, depending on your field, but it's, oh, I've been in AIs for 20 years, but it's, it's almost a meme at this point. You've got a problem. Deep learning solves it. Uh, deep learning doesn't solve every problem, but deep learning is, is perfect for this problem. So deep learning fundamentally boils down to you need a lot of data. If you have a lot of data, you, you can solve this. So imagine a world, right, where, you know, you just, walk, you just walk into your experience as you are, and the system digitizes you. It's motion capture with no suit. Because we could, if we could do this, you could have any kind of configuration. It doesn't have to be specialty camera. Doesn't have to be out, it could be outside. Just infinite possibilities, just like we live in many different worlds, right? But also what's really interesting about deep learning is it's future proof. You know, unlike a fixed hardware system that you buy and it sort of sits there, and it's literally, it's like buying a car. You know, it's getting, it's, it's losing value every day. Software gets better and better every day. And the hardware, the, the AI processors that drive the software get cheaper and cheaper and faster and faster. So what are the alternatives to a markerless motion capture system? You know, you could, you could go with, with the heavy duty, you know, motion capture system. They, and, they, and it works for certain things. And people are using, you know, special suits. And the, these are good, you know. But I think the two things you want to know is the, is the frictionlessness. How easy is it for people to be digitized? And how does it scale? Like, how does it scale from you know, one person to 100 people to everyone in the world, right? And so you know, the Vicon is right in, the, right in the lower. Great system, fantastic system. But you need you know, a special place and a lot of time. And you know, not a, how many people have motion capture systems in their, in their facility right now? All right, so oh, that's, that's pretty good. Um, you know, there are so many game developers who want to be able to do this. So you, you can see that out there. And I mean, I, I think Kinect was an excellent first stab at this, right? I mean, I really salute Microsoft. They inspired us a lot of like, you know, building a, a, you know, a consumer grade hardware that could, could do that. Um, I think where they, where they failed, where it sort of hit the wall was, it wouldn't work outside. It had a very specific form factor. And you just can't buy it anymore. So, um, so what's what's unique about the Wrench AI solution is we do deep learning. We've trained hundreds of thousands of images, and to build our, our networks. Not only have we generated real world imagery, but we've also built a synthetic data pipeline. So if, you may have heard of this in the past. So half of our team are AI experts. Half of our team are um, computer game people. So we build digital humans. We generate thousands of random digital humans, put them in different poses, render them, and then we get our data from them. And we, you know what? I'm going, I think I've talked enough. I'm going to go right to the demo because it's fun. Now this, this, so here, let's see, we'll go over here. So you can see here. Can everybody see that? Actually, let me go full screen. Sorry about that. The, uh, the filming lights are. So here we are. So we got a webcam. And as you see, I mean, it's hard. This has been calibrated for you. Thank you very much. That's super kind on the lights in general. Thank you so much. 
So we've got a webcam. We're taking it onto the computer. We've got a standard NVIDIA GPU. OK. And we're calculating the 3D positions of everyone right now in real time. Uh, I have it running on the phone, but I was not sure I could do a live demo here. And I appreciate the ability to do a live demo. But we have it running on the phone where we can actually overlay like a, basically a full, a full filter. And um, let's, uh, it's just sort of fun. We'll turn off the hands. We'll turn off the face. And we'll go here. So if you're familiar with green screen, so we get closer. Again, this is not optimal thing. As we get closer, for the people who are there, we've got rid of the whole background. So we can get that gentleman. It's, again, at our booth, it was a lot more compelling. And maybe I could torture my poor buddy Wen here. If, if Wen, if you come up to the, up here, a bit closer, you'll have, actually we'll see it'll start turning on Wen's face and his hands. Uh, let's see. Come on. Oh, I didn't turn on the hands. There you go. It's been a very long day. We've had a lot of demos. So anyways, so that is, that's the system. Thank you very much, Wen. And, and again, we have it running on the phone. But uh, well, anyways, let's see here. So let's go over here back. So there you have it. Effectively, markerless motion capture. We're taking any camera and turning it into a full motion capture system. And then, you know, OK, so, so that's, that's cool. Here, here it is. That's uh, Maggie and Edward running it right on the phone. That's a Snapdragon S8. Again, we had a live demo of that, but the same, same thing. But like, why? It's cool, but who cares, right? So um, again, once you can start digitizing people, you can do a lot of fun. So over there on the side, that we built a, a magic mirror, we call. So we had a simple camera. And then Andre, another one of our, our team members, is driving a chicken, right? And so he's driving the chicken with his 3D you know, with his body. And then if he flaps his legs, he um, can you know, crap out eggs. And even though he's a chicken, and he's a rooster, and he's making eggs, it, there's a lot going on there. But, um, but what's fun too, right, is I think about the experience, right? And, 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 and building on the last speaker of like, you want to make magical experiences. You want to make, you know, people have fun. And so what I, what I, th I think this is where we're at in terms of mixed reality today in the sense of, I, under, I, I love the headsets, but there's a huge amount of friction to those headsets and trying them on. And you know, so you'll see this in, in stores where people want to come up. And, and, and think of the embodiment, right, of the sense I'm here standing. I see myself. I see there's a cause and effect. But what's, what gets fun and, uh, to try it, it's like you can kick eggs with your, so that you see eggs on the screen, and you kick the eggs with your legs, and you watch. It's, it's beyond hands, right? Because we've done, people are doing face tracking, they're doing hand tracking, which is awesome. But the full body in that, in that sense, uh, this is the, here, here we've got it shown at, at, at NVIDIA and just people trying it out and really having fun, right? And I mean, we're, we're our, our background, we're all gamers, so we, we want fun. But this is, this is what I wanted to show. So we get tired, we're programmers, so we get tired of actually trying all these systems. It actually gets physically tired. So we actually take videos of people doing stuff, and then we run it through our system. So here you can see this um, uh, video we took off the web where we take it on the phone. And so this is like a full body filter where the guy's got a, a, an outfit on. So um, talk about AI, you know, just give you a sense of if you're not familiar with AI, it's sort of interesting to learn at a high level. So it's all about data. So we have our proprietary data system. So we've taken a lot of, we work with a lot of customers in the entertainment space. We take all their images and we actually click up, we mark all the points. Uh, we, you know, we have teams to click the points. We render the, ran the, the people in virtual, in virtual reality. And then we uh, crank it out. So how does this work at a high level? You know, it's a lot like a motion capture suit, right? You see the dots and stuff. What we're doing is, you know, we, we're, we're going to build a synthetic version of that. So here's, here's Maggie and James, and they're standing here. And so the first thing we do is called key point detection. So we have literally exposed the computer to hundreds of thousands of images, and we've labeled it to say le right wrist, left wrist, you know, right elbow, so on and so forth, all these points. And they're all labeled, and we feed this into the computer. And, and we into, the, into these neural nets, these convolutional neural nets. And we, we teach, teach and teach, and we grind GPUs overnight all weekend long. And then you, but, but they get good at recognizing body parts. And so a way to think about this 
is if you're not familiar with motion capture, as you can think of it, this is like learning letters of the alphabet, right? And that those are the, the, that's how, you, you know, so when you're first teaching your kids to read, you're first teaching the alphabet, then if you have small children, I, I did, they're all grown up now, you, know, you have to say A, B, C, D, you know, and you say it again and again, and that's exactly what it's like training these, these systems. So there, there we get the little key points, right? But the, the next step, is to join the key points into different bodies, to know, is that James's body, is that Maggie's body, and, the, and to build that full skeleton. So um, once you've trained a model in AI, it's fully trained, then you want to deploy it. That's called inferencing. That's where you're actually using the brain. And so you can see this sort of high-level schematic of we take the 2D video in, right? We put it through our motion capture system, our AI motion capture system, and then we can get segmentation. That's a fancy word for green screen. We can get the 2D skeleton. We can get the 3D skeleton. Um, we can get ID, so on and so forth. We'll talk a little bit about behavior capture later. So right now, we're running on um, NVIDIA GPUs sitting on top of Tensor RT. It'll work all the way from a TX2 to, uh, to a Volta. We have it running on Snapdragon, and we also have it running on Coromel. Uh, for iOS. So, you know, just give you a sense of just what people are doing, sort of early adopters. Uh, one group, uh, Samsung, for their, their flagship store in New York, they wanted to build this really interactive experience, like building on the classic Christmas window. How do you do that in 2018? So here, you could walk by and you could control the snowflakes and so on and so forth with your body. Sort of like an interactive snow globe. Some, something that's really crazy, we've been working with NVIDIA, a good partner of ours, and they're, they're really interested in, in a lot of things with AI, but they want robots and humans to interact, right? And how do you get a robot to interact with a human? Well, the robot needs to know where you are, right? And so, so we built a, a thing for SIGGRAPH last year where if you looked at the robot, if you're walking, if you looked at the robot, if you engaged with the robot, the robot would engage you in, in, in ask you to play um, go and it was a real robot. Backs of the robot. These these are super cool. These uh, collaborative robots are like about four thousand pounds, but they're built to not crush humans. So they're built to work in 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 close proximity. Now, how did we train Baxter to uh, interact with us? This is where it gets really interesting. Nvidia and us, we actually trained Baxter in virtual reality. So they've built a thing called the Holodeck. Which, uh, which is a game engine, effectively. And there you see the, these guys over here. We'll run the video again. Um, you see these guys. They're getting beamed in to virtual reality. It's a virtual Baxter. And Baxter's brain is getting trained to interact with real humans in virtual reality. And I think you're going to see this more and more and more. Uh, we sort of think of you know, virtual reality as a training ground, maybe. So you know. To, to do tasks in the real world, I think it's going to be a very safe place to train robots and, um, and cars and everything else. And again, that might not be some of the things you've seen over the last couple of days. So, so finally, we're, we, I want to talk about the next step. So we've got super great 3D, and, and we're, we're, but once you understand where the skeleton is moving in 3 space, once you understand where the people are, then you can just start to do some really interesting things. And we want to understand behaviors, because that's, that's the ultimate, right? Understanding behavior. So this is some early work uh, that's called one of our scientists, where we're teaching the computer to understand what the behavior is. So here the behavior it was for Christmas. We, wanted to, we always put out a Christmas video. So the Christmas here was like people putting the ornaments on the tree or taking them off. And you're going to see this more and more, right? Once you digitize humans, all the interesting things you can find out, and, and, and this will have huge impact across, across all industries, starting with AR and VR, because then machines can understand us. And if machines can understand us, they can serve us. All right. Uh, yep, that's, that's it. That's the team. That's the team digitized. Um, thank you very much for um, your, your, your attention at the end of this uh, long but great conference. If there's any questions, I think we have two minutes. Three minutes, if there's any questions. Otherwise, I'd go have a martini. Um, yes, go right ahead. So the, uh, the, the generalized model that you create by working on, you know, the data, um, can, can 
Great question. That can be built on top. So right now you can think of us as a pure sensor system, right? Is that we can give you a, we can at a high fidelity get your gate. But then you'd have to build an extra layer on top of like sort of gate analysis or gate comparison. So right now just think of us as a sensor system. Oh, okay. Sorry. The, the question was, can you use this to do gate analysis? And, 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 and my answer was, in the sense this is an input into a gate analysis system. This gives you the, the, the raw data for gate analysis. Any other questions? Which I will repeat if you have. Uh, there's a question over there. How unique is everyone's point between the gate and the No, no, okay, so, so the question is how unique are people's body parts effectively? Um, not from our perspective. That's why the system works in the sense of we have, we've trained it on a large data set and, and we can get a totally different person and it will just work. Because more or less people are more or less, we have the same shirts and it, what happened, we showed early work at all last year and we never trained on babies. And then this woman came up and she had one of those baby Bjorns, and she had a little baby, in, you know, like a one-year-old or something. And I thought it was really cool because, like, I, I don't know, is this going to work? We never traded on babies. But, I mean, babies are human, sort of, right? And so they're, they're reasonable. And it was tracking the woman and the baby, and even though it was sort of like a human in a human, and it worked really well. Building on that, one of the things that's really important if you want to do sort of, you know, mass XR, you know, people come in all sizes and shapes, and they don't come with all their body parts, right? So it's really important. We had a, we had a guy, uh, two people come yesterday. It was really great. One had crutches, and we wanted to say, will it, will it work? You know, we'll confuse a crutch with a leg, and it didn't. Another guy came in a wheelchair, and he rolled up, and it was really tracking nicely. He could see him in a wheelchair, and I think that's super important, right? Because you want to, be, you want to give everyone these experiences, whether missing limbs, uh, fingers, so on and so forth. We're out of time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.